So here we are at the legendary Suzuka circuit in Japan. It's the home of Honda, and speaking of which, they really need to up their game this season, especially considering that McLaren are currently lining up last in the Constructors' Championship. A very poor showing so far for the British constructor and Japanese manufacturer who both have previous success in the sport, and are by no means idiots when it comes to making a quick car. However, this track could be where it all changes. Is Honda's home circuit, and one that doesn't rely too heavily on engine performance compared to others. As well as with them having two very experienced drivers in Fernando Alonso and Jensen Button, they could do very well here. Even though all eyes are on Jensen and whether he will be in Formula 1 next year, a topic which he is still very tight-lipped on going into free practice. I enjoy fighting for wins and I enjoy fighting for podiums and I, I also enjoy the, the thought of it happening one day. Um, if, you, uh, you know, if you think it's never going to happen, if you think you're going to be fighting at the back for years to come, I have no interest in that. Um, but if I think that there is uh, a positive future, um, of course I would love to, to compete. But with Jensen's future aside for now, let's see how well he and Fernando do for the Brits and Japanese here around Suzuka. Qualifying here at Suzuka in Japan got underway with Honda looking to please their Japanese crowd on home turf. Q1 saw Jensen Button in the McLaren Honda initially go out on the prime tyres, but that put him only faster than the two manor drivers. So he then had to go out late on in the session on the quicker option tyres, and amazingly, his lap on the options put him in 7th place. Although once you look at the standings at the end of Q1, you do have to note that some of the drivers in the top teams did only go out on primes. But regardless, the drivers eliminated from Q1 did not include Jensen Button, but did include both manners, of which Will Stevens was the quickest driver. Then both Saubers went out with Nasa the quickest of the two, and both Saubers sandwiched the other McLaren of Fernando Alonso. Moving on into Q2, and Jensen Button decided not to set a lap in Q2 in order to preserve his tyres as much as possible for the 27 lap long race tomorrow. This decision obviously saw him down and out in 15th at the end of Q2, with Romain Grosjean just ahead of him and Carlos Sainz in 13th. The last two cars to drop out were both Force Indias, of which Nico Hülkenberg was the quickest. This left the final qualifying session to end like this. Maldonado in 10th and Max Verstappen will line up for the race in 9th. Daniel Kvyat is in 8th and the Williams of Felipe Massa is in 7th. Then the other Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo is in 6th and the other Williams of Valtteri Bottas is in 5th. The second row is an all Ferrari row headed by Sebastian Vettel and the front row is an all Mercedes row led by Lewis Hamilton for tomorrow's race. So here we are on the grid for the Japanese Grand Prix, another sunny Grand Prix seemingly, I always set the weather to dynamic but 9 times out of 10 we seem to get a sunny session for whatever reason. Now I'm starting on the prime tyres, we're actually going to be the only driver to start on the prime tyres this race, much like in the real life Japanese Grand Prix where Jensen was also the only driver to start on the prime tyres. So we'll have to see how that plays out for us, especially come the end of the race. But anyway. The five lights are lighting up, we're saying the brake bias to the rear, and the lights are out and away we go. And another smoky start from us, but it looks like we've actually been jumped by a Sauber, yes that's a Sauber Felipe Naz, and we've got our teammate in Ericsson right behind us, looking to see if they can make the move, and now we're alongside Felipe Naz, are we going to hold it around the outside? No, Naz is going to get back past us, he's actually pushed us off the track a bit, it's like Hamilton and Rosberg all over again, apart from the fact we've actually been able to recover the place which Rosberg wasn't able to do and we've got out ahead of Felipe Nasa and I can tell you this isn't the first time we'll be, we'll be battling Felipe Nasa that is a trend throughout this race. But anyway we're up behind Carlos Sainz and Roman Grosjean and we could try and make the move on Carlos Sainz are we? Yes we can see into the first deck now can we make the move on Carlos Sainz and we have and Sainz has just disappeared off we got yellow flags because of Carlos Sainz 
and we didn't even make contact with him, so he's just driven off into the gravel. Let's have a look at what happened here. So this is our front wing camera, and as you can see, just about don't touch him there, but if you go here, not a single bit of contact was made. Signs literally just drove off. I mean, we didn't give him a lot of room, but there was still enough room, and there was no contact, so... As you can see, this, here's what he does. He just just gives up. I, just, I don't know what happens there, but he crashes into Ericsson. So Ericsson has lost his front wing, so Sainz has lost his front wing and his race is ruined. Ericsson has now lost his front wing. Well, let's have a look here. So Marcus Ericsson, yeah, just wrong place, wrong time, really. So there's two drivers' races who are, uh, well, two drivers whose races are effectively over. So Ericsson signs. I don't know how much they were realistically going to be able to do this race, but definitely won't be able to do a great deal now. But we could try and make the move on Grosjean. And we have actually into the chicane, the second to last corner. Um, the chicane, uh, what, I can't, what is it, the, ca the casino, no, the Casio Triangle, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, it's both Mercedes here, as you can see, Lewis Hamilton is still leading the race from pole position, but it looks like his teammate Nico Rosberg is going to try to make the move, and Rosberg has, so Rosberg is now into first place, he's run wide, but he's still just about able to hold the place, so Rosberg is now in first, Hamilton is in second, so he's lost out the place from, obviously qualifying pole position, but now he's lost out, but Knowing him, he'll be able to make the move back past on Rosberg, hopefully at some point. Now going in back into that chicane, just about got past Perez. We had to lock, well, we locked up the brakes there, but we just about made the move on Perez. So we're up into 12th, and bearing in mind, we're on the prime tyres. So I have no idea where all this pace has come from. And Maldonado's pitting in early. I have no idea what that's all about, because as far as I know, he didn't have any damage on the car. I think he's just done an incredibly early stop. So unless he's doing a five-stop strategy or something. I have no idea why he'd be pissing in that early. But anyway, uh, coming on just a bit later, Nico Hulkenberg is in the pits. Now, Hulkenberg's also pitting in early. We know Hulkenberg, as we've seen many times this series, does pit in early um, compared to other drivers. Bahrain's a prime example of it, but he's always done that this series. He's doing it again here, but now we're battling again with Felipe Nazar going into 130R. I've been able to make the switchback move on Felipe Nazza, so we were able to defend the place, but Nazza got past us using his Ferrari power unit, and then we got the switch back on him, and amazingly, we were able to keep the last points place, 10th place. And now, is there someone else in the pits? I think there's some other cars in the pits, we'll be able to jump, so we're up into 9th, and we're up into 8th actually, but Nazza's trying to get past us, going into the first corner, and again he's run wide, are we going to make the switch back just about, and all of this, impressively, just behind Sebastian Vettel. I mean, how the, the only other time this entire series where we've driven the McLaren and have been right near Sebastian Vettel was way back in Australia, and that was due to extreme circumstances. But anyway, coming on to lap eight, and we're in eighth place. Um, Felipe Nazar's already coming to the pits, and as you can see, we're we've been passed by Valtteri Bottas. Bottas has already pitted, that's why he's behind us. So we're down to ninth. Fernando Alonso is the car who's directly behind us, but obviously. Lots of cars have pitted already, Verstappen, Hulkenberg, and Naz obviously have all pitted, so realistically Alonso isn't that close to us as it seems he, um, he is, but we're fitting on the option tyres, and we're out in 11th, it looks like we may well be 12th or 13th, Hulkenberg's got past us, Maldonado should get past us after his incredibly early stop, but can we get out ahead of Felipe Naz? This is the crucial thing really, and no, Nasa has got around the outside of us yet again. He loves trying to go around the outside of us, but we've just about held a place yet again. We've been able to defend from Nasa, although have we going into the S's? I think he's going to try and hold a move. He's got the inside line for this part of the S, and yeah, he's got ahead of us. And we won't be able to make a move into this section of the S's because he's already got you know the place on us. He's substantially ahead of us. And now the battle continues a couple of laps later. The battle yet continues with Felipe Nazar. Now we're both on the option tyres, and the McLaren does have a half decent chassis, which we know the Sauber doesn't. Well, it's Sauber isn't a high downforce car. So if there's any part of the track we're going to be able to make a move, it is this part of the track. Going into the SSI, it looks like actually we've got the inside and we pushed him out a bit, but we've just about got the move on him, though he's pretty much side by side of us. And going into the first deck, though, and he's gone. He's off into the gravel. What on earth happened there? Let's have a look at this. So on board from Jensen Button. And as you can see in the wing mirror, yeah, it's, it's in a blind spot in the wing mirror. But to be honest, 
I have to say, I would say that is about 70% my fault, to be honest. I mean, NASA could have backed off and perhaps in hindsight should have, but at the end of the day, we did turn into him. But there's always the argument NASA should have backed off, but I will concede that is most... That's more my fault than it is his. Because at the end of the day, he had the right to defend, and we had some good wheel-to-wheel -wheel battling before that. But unfortunately, that wheel-to-wheel -wheel battling is going to have to end, because we're several seconds ahead of NASA now. As well as the fact we're on different strategies anyway. But anyway, we're up into ninth due to um, some cars pitting, obviously. Lots of different cars on lots of different strategies this race, so that's interesting to see. But obviously, we're doing the three-stop. Many cars are doing the two-stop. Some are doing the three-stop. Um, Hulkenberg's doing the four stop, I think Maldonado is. I don't really know what Alonso's doing because he always seems to stay out ahead of us. So Alonso's ahead of us, but we know he's got to pit soon. But Verstappen and Hulkenberg are both ahead of us. So even once Alonso's pitted, we're still one place away from the points. And considering we qualify 15th, this is remarkable. And the reason I didn't go out in Q2 was because this strategy, Prime's options, options, the tie's just about last that long. Like. If, if I did a lap in qualifying, I don't know whether the tyres would be able to last for the race. But as we can see, this is Hamilton and Rosberg battling again. And Hamilton, through 130R, amazingly, was able to make the move. So Hamilton is back up into first place. He's got past Nico Rosberg. That's brilliant for, for Hamilton's uh, Drivers' Championship hopes for the National F1 Championship. It's good in all sorts of ways. But anyway, 2 2 for Stappen and Alonso pitting up into ninth. Or did for Stappen pit? I think he did actually have Verstappen and Alonso both pitted. Nasa is now directly behind us in 10th. And as you can see, Kvyat is just away ahead. Um, just you know, a couple of seconds ahead. He's come out of the pits and he's on the prime tyres. So we're going to try and utilise this. Obviously, he's on the slower tyres and they're cold. So we're going to try and see if we can utilise this. And we caught up several seconds already through the S's. We're going to try and make the move. And it's like Kvyat was standing still. We caught up about four seconds in the S's. Obviously, cold tyres, but... It's still a red bull, we shouldn't be that much quicker than it. But this is Lewis Hamilton going into the pits. Ah, so he might well lose his lead to Nico Rosberg at this point. So Hamilton's going fitting on the prime tyres and Rosberg has already steamed ahead. So it looks like Rosberg should easily win this race because Hamilton's about 15 seconds behind at this point. But anyway, we're in 8th place and now obviously as I said with the tyre strategy which is lap specific which is why we don't qualify obviously taking life out of the tyres. And so, you know, we know the strategy. We've got it. We've got times to a T. So we know we need to come in this exact lap because I know the exact strategy. And this works, or it should work anyway. When we were in eighth, obviously Kvyat was just behind us, only about three seconds behind us. And um, but we're in ninth now. There's going to be some cars that are going to get past us, which well, should be anyway. So we're coming out in ninth. Verstappen is coming down to start first straight. It looks like he might get us. Fernando Alonso might do as well. That'd be a surprise if Alonso is able to jump us this race. Now, obviously, Verstappen's going to have the momentum. We're going into the first corner. We're going to have track position. We just about stay ahead of Max Verstappen. Now, here's what's going on here. We've got both Manners and Carlos Sainz, who Carlos Sainz has finally recovered and has caught up to both Manners and is now trying to pass them for track position. But as you can see, there's a second place man of Hamilton and the third place man of Massa, who are now getting caught up in this three-way battle for 18th place and Sainz is going all over the place and then the Manor and the Tal Rosso going into the pits that's held up Massa it's held up uh, Hamilton that was generally quite a scrappy section of the race and Ericsson's run off wide why enough was out about and he's clipped Massa but Massa's fine Ericsson isn't obviously Ericsson had to recover from his lap one crash and you know he had to be lapped and for some reason he was acting weirdly when being lapped, just like the manners and signs were. But Ericsson's lost his front wing for the second time this race, and he's essentially had it, you know. But uh, Felipe Massa in third, luckily, was able to get away from that. But now we're coming up to lap the manner of um, Alexander Rossi, I believe that is. But there's some yellow flags. Where's green flags now? Okay, so what's all this about? Green flags, yellows, and marshals can't really seem to decide what to do. But it says Sebastian Vettel's in eighth. So what's happened to Daniel Kvyat? What's happened to Vettel? Because Kvyat was the one who was just ahead of us. We were catching up with Kvyat at an alarming rate. But now, he's nowhere. Vettel is in eighth now. And what's going on here? Ericsson. There's Ericsson who's without his front wing. Both manners are just kind of, you know, doing what the police do. The British police do to criminals and just box them in. And Vettel's run wide. What's he done? I think he's lost his front wing. But we jumped Sebastian Vettel. And much like the Australian Grand Prix, 
Jensen Button is going to fish ahead of Sebastian Vettel. What on earth is going on here? We did we did it in Australia, but that was extreme circumstances. This again is extreme. Ericsson was just being completely stupid and blocked off Vettel. And Vettel's lost his front wing there. And he's going to have to do two thirds of the lap without a front wing. And no wonder we were able to get past him. It's again extreme circumstances. He ditched it in the gravel because we've got no aerodynamic grip. And here's what happens to Kvyat. He actually holds up Kvyat. So we were catching up to Kvyat. You know, we caught up several seconds to Kvyat, but we actually caught up a bit more then. This is Will Stevens, And Will Stevens has lost his front wing as well, so... Ericsson just joins the track. It was, again, Stevens is in the wrong place at the wrong time and got caught up with Marcus Ericsson. Now, Kvyat, as you can see, I think we left the pits about 18 seconds behind Kvyat. And we were then 12 seconds behind. I think after this incident, we were only 7 seconds behind Kvyat, because obviously Kvyat's on worn prime tyres and was held up by Vettel. So Vettel was doing us a massive favour here, but Kvyat was able to get past, and we would catch up to Kvyat at an alarming rate. It wasn't actually enough, unfortunately. As you can see, we're only about 6 seconds behind, so we caught up 12 seconds in this last stint, which is phenomenal. We were so much quicker than a Red Bull, which you never normally see. But McLaren Honda qualified 15th. We've had an amazing race here at Japan. Your Honda's home race, and we've been able to take it home for Honda in 8th place. So as you can see, in Park Fermi, Jensen Burns looking happy, obviously in 8th place, it's not quite what he signed up for, you know, when he signed up to McLaren all those years ago, but still 8th place is fantastic considering the team's current position in, you know, in this season compared to everyone else, it's amazing. Uh, Jensen Button's in 8th, Fernando Alonso's in 10th, obviously um, Nico Rosberg won, Hamilton was in 2nd in the end, um, and Felipe Massa was in 3rd, and no retirements, amazingly, but Vettel got a 5 second time penalty and signs did for their instance on the first lap and the 25th lap respectively and amazingly no retirements it's just like the real life japanese grand prix obviously nasa retired but was a classified finisher anyway onto the driver's table and there's nothing really interesting to say here other than that lewis hamilton has extended his lead in the driver's championship and is looking comfortable to win it so far onto the second half of the driver's table and jensen button thinks to his eighth place here is right behind Will Stevens in the Drivers' Championships. That means the Brits are 14th and 15th. And the only other change really is Fernando Alonso, thanks to his 10th place, was able to score only his third point of the season, with Mary and Rossi still the two guys not to have scored any points this season. On to Constructors, and Mercedes have extended their gap massively thanks to a 1-2. And Williams and Ferrari are on the same points total. The only reason Ferrari are ahead is because they won the first three races of the season. Whereas Williams have only won two races, Britain and Belgium, both thanks to Felipe Massa. And that's why Ferrari are ahead purely on the race win count. And the other interesting news is that McLaren Honda, thanks to their five points they scored this race, have actually leapfrogged Sauber and Manor. So McLaren started this race in last and are now in 8th, so considering this is Honda's home race, it's actually paid off quite well for them. And finally onto the nation's table, I've kind of really forgotten this has existed because Finland are dominating it, Germany are kind of quite comfortably in 2nd, the only person who I can see upsetting that is Daniel Ricciardo for Australia, but the thing I've got to worry about, as because I'm British and representing Great Britain, Brazil are only half a point behind us, so any future race where I'm in the Williams, I'm going to have to be Valtteri Bottas from now on. Even though it's extending their lead, I don't want Great Britain to drop out of the top five. And the only nation not to have scored points is USA, but as we know, the USA only consists of Alexander Rossi, and he's only competed in the last two races, and he's in a manner, so he's got everything against him, really. But anyway, guys, next time is the Russian Grand Prix, and we know the real-life 2014 race was rubbish actually the most interesting thing was that vladimir putin was actually attending the race but hopefully the race real life race and the race in this series can actually be more interesting than the 2014 grand prix and i'll see you guys for that episode only two days after the real life russian grand prix so i'll see you then